This is Twit. This is actually good news. It's nice every once in a while to have some good news on Twit. I know we have a lot of doom and gloom. We spend far too much talking about breaches and net neutrality. But this time, it's actually a good thing. And that is, we might be looking at a completely encrypted web in the very near future. Now, we know that in July of 2017, there was a nonprofit certificate authority, Let's Encrypt, that promised to deliver a product, something, a service that would put secure websites and web applications within the reach of any internet user. This was a, a wild card certificate, a way for you to enable encrypted communications without you having to go through an expensive CA. Well, it sounds like that's actually going to get live. Today, Let's Encrypt took that promised service and they made it a reality. In addition to a new version of that automated certificate management environment, an interface has been created that allows you to use a variety of client software packages to automate the verification of certificate requests. All of this means that even a non-tech web operator can now encrypt their traffic. Chibert, I'm going to throw this over to you. This is more in your ballywick. But does this mean that we can finally get rid of HTTP and say everything should be HTTPS? Shame if you are running <laughs> HTTP. No, the, the reality is Let's Encrypt has had single machine certificates for quite a while. Now, there, there's a caveat here. It's not like the traditional CA authority. You have to be able to run a piece of basically it's Python code. And their system's called ACME. And so it's Automated Certificate Management Environment. So it has been available for Apache and Nginx. Uh, it's also available for IIS, and I believe it's also available for VMware now. And the idea is <clears throat> they've shortened the lifespan of all the certs. So instead of buying a cert for a year, these are swapped out every 90 days. So the advantage of this is that um, if there has been a key compromise, it's 90 days. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so if you had um, a misinsurance or something like that, um, it's not the end of the world, at least, you know, f until the 90 days go on. And the system will automatically reinstall the new cert, get a new cert and stick it in. So it has to be able to, the platform has to be able to run a um, piece of software. Now, the interesting thing is <laughs> it'll run even on a Raspberry Pi, which is super cool. Um, but the wild card is big, big, big deal. So if you're running a major corporation with, say, a proxy in front of it, you could actually offload the SSL onto the proxy, which is what a lot of people like doing, especially if you're playing the game of the F5 or something like that. You can put the wild card in front, and that's actually a certificate for your entire domain. Um, so that's a lot less work. Now, this is also a pretty big deal because if you're offloading it, um, one, that means your systems aren't working as hard doing all the individual SSL decryption, but it also means that your IDS, IPS stuff are looking at it in a trusted area, uh, unencrypted, so they'll be more efficient. So it's pretty big deal and um, it couldn't have happened to a nicer industry because boy, oh boy, those CAs are really expensive and they add up really, really fast. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking of. I mean, this if this actually works even a little bit, like they say it's going to work with the auto provisioning, doesn't that basically get rid of the CA business? Yeah. Um, you're considering, you know, if even the, the second or third tier um, CAs, I'm still looking at something like, uh, I think it was seven or eight hundred bucks a year for a wild card. Yeah, yeah. Uh, three, three hundred, two, three hundred bucks for a single is that wow, that adds up really, really fast. So I, you know, it's not going to get rid of all the CAs. You know, it'll be still nice. I'll still need a CA for appliances that can't run Acme, right? Um, and so forth. But more and more, the IoT devices are going V6 and they're going SSL, or actually in this case, TLS. So having a way of ha you know getting your, CA your certificates a lot, lot cheaper, in this case, free, uh, I think that's going to make, I think that's going to be the tipping point. I don't think CAs are going to go away, but I think 
it's only going to be the big boys left. Right. Lou, I want to throw, the, throw this over to you because, of course, there's always going to be backwards compatibility problems. And as Chibert said, there there is some gear that we've got running in our colos and our data closets that will not play well with Let's Encrypt. So, of course, we're still going to need to see it for that. But here's the thing. I see this as putting more power into the hands of the IT manager and the CTO slash CIO because now they can essentially tell the CAs, we might need you for one or two things, but all of the things we used to use you for and all those really expensive certificates we used to buy on an annual basis, yeah, we're, we're just going to get that from Let's Encrypt now. I mean, that this should trim down the number of CAs and it should make the number of CAs that are left far more diligent in actually doing what they're supposed to do. So I think there's there's a couple parts there. Um, first part would be yeah, obviously backwards compatibility is a big thing. There's lots of devices out there, and you know using that as a forcing function against the CTOs, the CIOs of the world. I don't think that that's going to work to to some point, only because we see things like Internet Explorer old versions, we see ver old versions of Windows in the wild, and those are still not forcing functions to upgrade. Is it as expensive to upgrade for those things? Well, for browsers, it, it isn't. I mean, I think there's, there's reasons why they don't upgrade compatibility. There's, you know, they put a lot of um, money into the devices that they have and so on. So there's, it's going to be a slow trickle of upgrade at some point. So I think that that's going to go. Another thing is a level of trust. So Emily, Brian pointed out that Emily, the strange pointed out that, that, you know, enterprises might not want Let's Encrypt. And that's because having a CA that you pay for the security um, is something that enterprises do. Enterprises like to pay for things. They like to pay for the security that they get from a big business that offers such a thing like a certificate, like encryption. And so offering something that free tends to be, well, what, why is it free? What, you know, is it as secure? Is it this? Is it that? And so there's going to be a little bit of that as well, even though it's a misnomer, um, it's going to be, uh, you know, out there in the wild. So I think there's going to be uh, still a, quite a bit of delay, even though it's great and I'm going to put it on my site and I'm going to put my devices and my software. Um, it's definitely going to be a delay for enterprise and in, in, in the corporate world. Right, yeah. And Emily the Strange in our chat room has said exactly that, which is, look, this is great because choice is good and we like the ability to make things more secure far more easily than before. But as both you and Chibert have said, the big box manufacturers, uh, you know, Cisco and Nokia and Microsoft, they're probably going to want to want you to stay with a tradi traditional CA. I get that. That totally makes sense. But Chibert, maybe you can expand on this a little bit. The fact that there is now a way to do this automatically for most of your gear that's not in the data center and that it's easier than creating self-signed certificates and more secure than creating self-signed certificates means that, again, the CAs that are left will have to actually do what they were paid to do. We've had so many stories over the last couple of years of CAs that were basically just taking the money and not doing any of their due diligence to make sure that the certs were being used properly. This should cut that back, right? Because, I mean, if you're, if yeah. you're one of these companies that's on the edge, like, oh, I don't know, one that Google itself has penalized because they did such a piss-poor job, you just go out of business. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to sidestep that question just a tad. So lots and lots of enterprises for their primary websites are probably going to want a traditional CA. But lots and lots of people you know there's there's actually web servers on cisco routers and do you really want to pay for a traditional cert on a router for god's sakes it's only your 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 internal people are going to be using the interesting thing is the the article that um, we're scrolling through right now is actually a procedure on how to put let's encrypt onto a cisco router so that you can have a real Honest to God cert, it's Let's Encrypt cert on your Cisco routers. And it's also on uh, the F5 big IPs. So I think we're going to at first see a mix. We're going to be using Let's Encrypt for the sites and devices that we may not traditionally want to pay for a real cert. And the enterprises and large organizations are probably going to want to go and um, use the traditional. Now, Nick, yeah, sure you can self-sign. But do you really want to go and, you know, that means you have to protect the keys. Uh, if you really want to go further and set up a PKI facility within your organization, wow, that's a real pain. Um, also, it means that you have to go through that uh, painful process. You have to go and bring it up, 
tell the web browser that you trust it because you're self-signing. Then you have to download the cert and get it into the cache on that, on that particular browser. Uh, I've gone through that trying to teach administrators how to do that, and it is god-awful painful. And it creates an amazing, amazing support load. So if I have devices that have internet access so that I can go to a, a CA, in this case, Let's Encrypt, it just makes a lot of sense to be having a real cert uh, from, in this case, the EFF, Let's Encrypt. And now I can go all SSL, all TLS, all HTTPS on all my devices and close up those holes. It's, right. not, a, it's right. not a magic bullet. But it goes a long, long way to solving some of these security holes that could potentially, you know, if you have a router, you can make a span port, and now all of a sudden you can steal a lot of information. Wouldn't it be great to have less things to worry about? And yes, ZipDog, it's also a huge time saver. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think we should make this clear. This is not a forklift upgrade. This is not getting rid of everything. It's just going to make it a lot easier to do a lot of the things that you've been wanting to do, but were held back either because of complexity or cost. We've got Nick in the chat room who asks a very good question, which is, couldn't you just self-sign before? And absolutely, you can still do that. You can still self-sign. But if your equipment supports the Acme protocol and, it, and you can centrally manage all your certs, expire the ones that should no longer be valid, make sure that they're not being misused, that makes a whole lot more sense. And in the long run, that becomes so much easier to manage than trying to do a bunch of self-signed certificates that you use and then try to expire manually. Uh, Lou, I, I'm going to give you the, the last call on this. Let's Encrypt is just one company that's trying to work on these kinds of solutions. Uh, I'm hoping that they see a lot of success with this. I'm hoping that, that uh, manufacturers actually start including this as a default option on some of the gear, that would be that would be wonderful. I mean, I'd love to see Synology just make this a basic function on their Soho uh, their Soho routers. Um, where do you see this going? I mean, how much critical mass do we need before we can finally say this is table stakes? You must support Let's Encrypt and the Acme protocol if you want to sell any piece of hardware. I mean, you have to get critical mass in the industry. I think that um, startups alike small businesses that are building small appliances, that startups building small appliances, um, they're all going to start using this because it does you know, narrow their costs, uh, not only on their operating costs but, and their manufacturing costs, but also when they, sh you, know, you know, customers pay for it, they can reduce the cost there as well because um, you have a different cert for every device and so on and so forth. Um, I think that um, you know, th by that happening, it'll start to add critical uh, mass to the, to the industry. And then as consumers and businesses alike start to move on to it, it'll force it forward. But not until you have that. I think, you know, more and more websites and more and more organizations are going to have to start using this. And maybe Let's Encrypt should start, you know, giving that that data, those analytics to the wild to show how many people are actually starting to move off of it and onto it, um, how they're saving costs in their business and how they're using automation. And by showing those examples, again, it'll just be a forcing function for the industry and organizations to move forward. And then you'll get that critical mass and then it'll force large you know, things like browsers and so on to kind of support it. So I think that's kind of how anything happens in the industry. And that's what will happen with this as well.